So today we're gonna to be talking about SQL join. So we have table one and table two, both with similar values, but also different values. Now the whole point of a SQL join is connect two tables together. But the key here is sometimes you don't want just all of the data. Sometimes you want only the things they have in common, or sometimes you just want what table one has along with table two, or the opposite, which is table two more so than table one. So today we're gonna dive into the different type of SQL joins, what they mean, and how to do them as well. So in SQL, there are five joins. Five joins. Again, different ways to connect two tables together. We're gonna start first with my favorite and the most common join that I've seen, the inner join. So this is when the two tables were finding everything in common with both tables. So at both table one and two, as you can see right here, the common value is one. So our output that we're gonna get is going to be just one. The inner join is the most common one because oftentimes you only really care about what values are actually common between the two tables. So this is one of the most common joins that I have used in my past experience. Here is a live example of that now. All right, so let's dive in. Some context here, I created a mock database for us to use and see how this flow of data and two tables coming together is gonna look like. If you want a video on how I made this mock database, let me know. I'd love to actually share that and maybe be something interesting for you. I'm calling this mock database Simple Starbucks. So we have our customer table and then we have these extra entities. I like to call these the type tables. If you want to split off one main table into other categories, that's what I like to call it as. And then we have our basic order table and then our order product, which is going to be how we're tracking all of the products in the table per order, right? So we're tracking all of the transactions. And at the same time, we have our product table with our product prep, which is going to be different customizations for stuff like strings. And then we have product type. This isn't a perfect database with all of its maximum entities and things like that but it's a good database to work with when we're just starting off. So back to joins. So we wanna talk about joining two tables together. So one example that we can do here is joining all of this together. So if we just do a basic select star from, and we'll do TBL customer, and then I'll give it an alias, which is gonna be C. If we just do basic run of that, as you can see, we have all these values, but they don't mean anything to us. Like what is country ID one? What is city ID 946? Like th these values mean nothing to us. They're just numbers. This is where we're gonna do an inner join. So we're gonna connect our customer table, join, and then we're gonna join on TBL. Let's start with country. We'll call it CO, CO for country. TBL country, CO on CO dot country ID is equal to, and now we're gonna grab this alias right here, which is from customer. We'll do C dot country ID. I'm doing that because as you guys can see, we have the primary key here, which is our country ID. And then we have the foreign key here in the table customer. Now, one thing to know here about relational databases, when you put a foreign key in a table, that means there can only be one of that item assigned to that specific table. So in this instance, a customer can only ever have one country, which makes sense. This works backwards as well. As you can see, we have city ID and that too, a customer can only ever have one city ID. So when you think about putting a foreign key in a table, you have to recognize that it's a limiter. You can only ever have one. Now that we have our joins, put them together. And now we have our the country names. Now, I only have US data getting into international, got a little tricky with the letters and stuff. Um, that's besides the point. We can do the same thing with city. So we'll do join TBL city, CI on ci.cityid is equal to c.cityid. And we will get all of these values. Pretty cool. So let's say, for example, I want to expand further and I want to do ci.cityName is equal to Seattle. Got one customer. <laughs> That of course doesn't make any sense. It's based out of Seattle. But this is just one example of how you can join together multiple tables and pull out interesting information out of it. Now, if you want to get technical, people actually call it inner join. But you know, if you want to be cool, just say join, you dirty dog, you. Huh? What did he say? <laughs> But yes, that's inner joins. So that's the inner join. Next, we have the left join. 
So with the left join, you really only care about what's both unique in table one, but also what's unique in both table one and two. You care about these values, number one and two, and you care about number one and number two. That probably sounds confusing, but if you look on this diagram, you can see in the left join, we care about everything in table one, which is everything right here in the blue, but we do not care about everything in table two. We only care about what is in common in table two with table one. You can see that in this diagram. Now here is an example of that as well. Next, we're gonna be talking about how to code left join. Now say we have the same, the same base code right here. We have our inner joints connecting where we want the common values to be. We're gonna extend further and do another join to TBL order. O on o dot order or o dot customer id is equal to c dot customer id join that together now we're also going to expand further and we're going to do a so it'll be a left join on tbl order product called ops on op dot order id is equal to o dot order id left join like i said isn't as common as the main join the inner join but it's still useful to know and next we're going to be talking about the right join So for right join, it's gonna be the complete opposite. It's gonna be everything within table two, which is gonna be values one, three, and four, but we're getting everything in that right table only, as well as everything that matches at the same time. So this is a key here where it focuses on that right table more so than the left table and everything that is matching as well. For right join, this is what that looks like in code. Now let's expand a little further and go into right join. This is kind of how the actual language is gonna go and what to kind of expect for output. This is a bit trickier in this example because all of my data right now is normalized. When you do left and right joins, typically it's with data that isn't normalized, and that's where the main difference is. So since all of my data right now is pretty much in second to third normal form, which pretty much means there's no duplicates inside this database, a left or right join isn't gonna make that big of a difference. But like I said, in most circumstances, when you do left or right, it's going to be more towards the data that is not normalized. All right, and that's right join. Next, we have the outer join. Now for this one, it's going to be everything in both tables now. That's what's gonna be included. But what does outer join look like? Think about outer join, this is what it's gonna look like. As you can see, we have both tables here, table one and table two, but we have all the values listed. So as you can see, we have values one and two, table one right here. We also have value one from table two on this side. And at the same time, we have values three and four from table two. So in this, we hold all the values. So here's what it looks like when you actually code it as well. Next, let's talk about the full outer join. On this one, we will simplify further. Let's do let's do a more simplified example of this. We'll start with TBL product, and we'll do a full outer join. TBL product type PT on PT dot product type ID is equal to P dot product type. So as you can see, we have the entire data set in this example. And in this example, we just have everything. So when we think about the entire two tables, it's gonna have both full tables worth of data. Now, this isn't as common as well when we think about connecting two tables. Rarely do you ever care about everything, but in those minor instances where you do care about those, this is the code that you're gonna need to, to do. That. It's pretty simple. It's just full outer join. All right, and last but not least, we have... We have the union. So what does union actually do? When we think about union, this is what it's gonna look like. As you can see, we have table one, this value right here, which is one and two, and then we're gonna stack it right above table two. So it'll be right here. So as you can see, we have, this is all the values from table one, and this is all the values from table two. They're literally just going right on top of each other versus being next to each other. Think of joins as more of combining columns together versus union is gonna combine the rows together. Those are very two distinct differences between a join and a union. And here's what union is gonna look like when it comes to code. Now, lastly, we're gonna be talking about the union. So in this example, we're actually just gonna grab two data sets. We're gonna grab this query first, which is gonna be everything with the city of Seattle. Then we'll also grab this one, which is going to be everything in Springfield. A simple way to do this is simply just by typing the word union in between these two queries. What is key here is that all these column names are exactly the same. So as you can see, the only difference right now in this query is that it's one is filtering for Seattle and one is filtering for Springfield. That is the main difference. That's something to note. And when you combine those together, as you can see, we have all of our Springfield customers, but in the very middle. <laughs>
we have our Seattle customer as well. So the key here is that you're stacking two queries together, which in its own represents two separate tables and you're just putting them on top of each other. I really need to emphasize this again. You need to have the same columns for this to work properly. If you don't, then it's not gonna work right. So like watch this. Let's say I wanted to just pull up this query, put this in here, boom. Exactly, it's not gonna work. They need to have equal number of expressions in their target list, which means it needs to be the same columns for both. If they don't have the same columns, it's simply not gonna work. But yes, that is how to specifically code union. There is technically one more join that I'm not gonna mention here because I don't think it's very used as often. It's called the cross join. It's, I'll put the visual up on here. It's a little bit more complicated and I can't really explain it all that well, if I'm being honest. From my experiences at least, cross join really isn't that common, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But yes, these are all of the joins that you need to know when it comes to learning SQL. Honestly, it's not that crazy complicated. Like I said, the main one that you really need to know is this inner join. This is gonna be your main focus when it comes to most tables. I don't really use left join or right join all that often. Very rare circumstances where I actually do use those functions. And then same with outer join too. I don't really ever use that as well. Unions I do use occasionally, but again, not as often as well. But your main join is definitely gonna be the inner. But yes, with that being said, I hope this video was helpful and useful for you. SQL, honestly, ain't that bad. It's a fun language to learn. It's one of my absolute favorite languages. And I hope that in this video, you're able to learn something and learn it in a very entertaining way. Let's say that. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. So I just use you can